If you need to pass GED math, you're going to have to know how to beat percent questions. In this video, I'm going to teach you what to know to help you get more percent questions right on the GED so you can move ahead faster to bigger and better things like college or a better job or joining the military, whatever your goal happens to be. And we're going to get started right now. So the first thing to know about percents is that percent just means per hundred. And we can use this to easily convert a percent to a fraction. All you have to do is take that percent and write it over 100 and then simplify the fraction. Now, some people say reduce the fraction. Some people say lower. Simplify, reduce, lower, just several ways of saying the same thing. So let me give you an example here. So what if I gave you 44% and I said convert 44% to a fraction? How would you do that? You can pause the video if you want to. Think about it, try it out, and then when you're ready, we'll go over the answer. We want to take the percent and write it over 100. So we have 44%, so I'm going to put 44 over 100. Okay, so we're not done yet because we have to simplify or lower this fraction. Now, you can do it by hand if you want. In fact, it's important to know how to lower these by hand uh, for your test. But let me just give you a quick way to do it with your calculator. And totally up to you to decide on your test if you want to do it this way or do it uh, by hand. But anyway, all you do is you take this button that says N over D. You're going to push it and it's going to bring you to this screen. So then you're going to come down here and you're going to put in 44. So then you want to hit this arrow here and notice how the little blinker goes down to the bottom part of the fraction. And so then I'm just going to enter in 100, right like that. And so lastly, I'm going to press the enter button. And just like that, we get the fraction lowered 11 over 25. And that's going to be the answer here. It's up to you just for the sake of time on your test. If you want to do it using the calculator, up to you to make that decision. Okay, so here's another example. Uh, we have 63%. So now's your chance to pause the video and try to convert this percent to a fraction. Okay, hopefully you had a chance to try this. So the first step here is to take the 63 and write it over 100. And actually, in this case, there's nothing to simplify. 63 over 100 is already in its lowest form here. So the answer here is just 63 over 100. And again, you can just simply use the calculator if you're not sure if something's in simplest form or not. Let me show this again here. So you start by pressing this N over D key right here, this key that says N over D. And then you would just do 63 hit the little arrow right here to take you down to the bottom of the fraction over 100. And then if I just hit the enter key down here, right here, it doesn't change. It still says 63 over 100. So that's a quick way to tell if a fraction's in lowest form or not. So you might have been able to tell that just by looking that 63 over 100 can't reduce anymore. But if not, there's no shame in using the calculator as much as you need to. So to convert a percent to a decimal, all you want to do is get rid of that percent sign and then you're going to put a decimal two places to the left. So let me show you an example to clarify what this means. So let's say that we have 71%. Okay, so how would you convert 71% to a decimal? So now's your chance to pause the video and try this out and then when you're ready, we'll go over the answer. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to get rid of that percent sign and I'm going to put a decimal two places to the left of that percent sign. So if my percent sign was right here, I get rid of it and I go two to the left. So here's one, here's two, and that's where my decimal would go. So here's another example. Let's say this time we have 5%. So what is 5% as a decimal? Now's your chance to pause the video, try this out, and whenever you're ready, we'll go over the answer. What you would do is we want to get rid of that percent sign, and wherever that percent sign was, we want to move two places to the left. So here would be one, here would be two, and in this case, when we put our decimal, we're going to have to add a zero in there. So 5% is equal to 0 0.05. So to fully maximize your score with these percent questions and to get as many as possible right, I highly recommend you use this formula, part over whole equals percent over 100. And this is really gonna help you out with word problems with percents and even other questions with percents too, you can use this on. 
And depending on which textbook you use, sometimes they write part over base equals percent over 100. I have written down part over whole equals percent over 100. Different companies' textbooks, sometimes they'll swap the word whole out and put base in there. But just know that it's the same exact formula. It's just a different word. And if you're not using a textbook, then you don't have to worry about that. Um, another thing I should mention here is that after a while, the more you practice with percent questions, you might get to the point where you don't even need to use this formula. You can just read the question and just kind of know what to do and what to calculate without doing the formula. And that's totally fine. But for most people, especially beginners, I would just memorize this formula and just rely on this heavily for percent questions. And you shouldn't have much trouble once you practice with it a few times. So let's look at this question here. Austin's bill at a restaurant is 28.22. He wants to leave the waiter a tip worth 20% of his bill. What is the dollar value of the tip? So let me give you a chance to pause the video, try this out, and whenever you're ready, we'll go over the answer. Okay, so to get this right, we just want to use the formula here. And like I said, you might not need the formula to do this, but I'm just going to walk you through using the formula. We know that the whole is 28.22. All right, so the whole is always going to be the bigger number. So 28.22 is what I'm going to put in here for whole. Now, the percent is usually easy to find because they just give it to you right here, 20%. So right here in the formula where I see this percent sign, I'm just going to put 20 in here. And it says, what is the dollar value of the tip? Well, if you think about it, the tip is going to be a smaller number than the whole bill. So since we don't know what the tip is, I would just put in an X for now. You could call it A, B, C, it doesn't really matter. I just like X because it's simple. For the whole, I'm going to put 28.22 in. And over here now, for my percent, I just replace that with 20. And I'm obviously just going to leave the 100 down here. So once I have this set up correctly, there's a couple different ways you could go about solving this. Basically, what I'd want to do here is I would first simplify this fraction over here. So you can do that again, just using your calculator, just like I showed you earlier. I mean, you can also do it by hand if you want to. Uh, but if we just simply just put 20 over 100 into our calculator, like I showed you how to do earlier, it's going to simplify it down to 1 over 5, which I think makes it easy to work with. All right. And like I said, there's multiple ways to approach this. You don't have to do it this way. But now what I'm going to do is cross multiply and you're probably angry at me right now because my handwriting is probably really complicated and hard to understand, but I want to do five times X. All right. So I write that right here, five X and I want to cross multiply this way too. So one times 28.22 is just going to be 28.22. So I now have five X equals 28.22. And the name of the game is to get x by itself here. So I have 5 times x. I want to do the opposite of division, or sorry, the opposite of multiplication, which is division. So if I divide by 5 on this side, the 5s will cancel out, because 5 divided by 5 is just 1, leaving me with just x on this side. But whatever I do to one side, I also have to do it to the other. So I've got to divide by 5 over here as well. So 28.22 divided by 5 is 5 point six four four which really we can just round it to five point sixty four so basically austin would be paying five dollars and sixty four cents for the tip and so to find the total amount that he's going to be spending you would do twenty eight point twenty two plus five point sixty four Okay, now I was at Dave & Buster's last weekend, and if you've never been there before, I'd recommend it, but they actually put the tip like right on the, the check when you go to pay for it. Uh, a lot of restaurants, I think, do that now, so in, depending on where you go, you might not even need to calculate this by hand anymore. So this video's champion shoutout goes to a GE test taker who had some adversity with math, but after four tries, finally passed. And I want to share this example to congratulate this test taker, but also to show you right now, if you're struggling, that if you keep working hard and keep working smart, eventually you're going to get it done. The key is to just keep sticking with it, no matter how hard it seems, and eventually you're going to get there. Danielle paid 13.75 total for an Uber ride, including $2.50 for her tip. What percent of the total cost did she pay for her tip? And I don't care how you round it for right now since we're just practicing the percent calculations. So let me give you a chance to pause the video and try to figure this out. And when you're ready, we'll go over the answer. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pick out my big number here, which is 13.75. That is going to be my whole. 
and I'm going to take the smaller number, the 2.5, and I'm going to make that the part. So to set this up correctly, you should have 2.5 over 13.75 equals the percent over 100, just like this. And what we're going to do now is solve for this percent sign. And you could do this in a couple different ways. What I like to do is do the 2.5 divided by 13.75 first, which is going to give me uh, 0.18 and a bunch of other numbers, but I'm just going to leave it as 0.18. So I have 0.18 equals percent over 100, and I'm trying to get this percent. So since it's percent divided by 100, if I multiply by 100, the hundreds will cancel out and give me that percent. But in math, whatever you do to one side, you also have to do to the other. So I'm going to come over here and do 100 times 0.18. And the answer is going to be 18 equals percent or 18 percent. All right. And like I said, I don't care how you rounded this, but you should have got 18 or something very, very close to that. Danielle goes to make believe Championsville High School where she plays basketball. Danielle's team won 60 percent of their games. If her team won 18 games, how many games did the team play? So now's your chance to pause the video, try this out, and whenever you're ready, we'll go over the answer. And don't worry if you get stuck because we're just going to go over this. Okay, so this scenario is a little bit different. In this case here, the percent is given to us as 60, so I'm just going to put 60 into the formula for the percent this time. But when it comes to this 18, okay, this 18 is just going to be the part. And it says, how many games did the team play total? So now we need to solve for the whole. So let's set this up. So this is how we would set the problem up correctly. Now, there's a couple things that we could do here. Let me show you how to do this where we cross multiply. So if we go down here, we would do 100 times 18. So I rewrite that as 1800. And now on the other side, we're going to to multiply these two numbers. So x times 60 is just going to be 60x. So what we would do here is divide by 60. And that's going to cancel the 60s out. But as you know, whatever we do to one side, we also have to do it to the other as well. So we're, we do 1800 divided by 60. And that gives us 30. So 30 equals x. 30 is how many games the team played. Now it's time for me to introduce this video's Champions Challenge question. So the following question is, in my opinion, the hardest question in this video. But immediately after it, I'm going to show you a simpler question that's also a fair game for your test. And I think the simpler example is going to be a lot easier once you've done all these harder word problems. So let's get into the Champions Challenge question. Jane received a 5% raise. If her old monthly salary was $1,200, what is her monthly salary now? So let's have you pause the video if you want to give this one a shot. And whenever you're ready, we'll go over the answer. Okay, so basically the first step here is to figure out the dollar amount of her raise. And then we're going to add that to 1200 so it's the same similar process here, except in this case, we've got an extra step to do. So the whole is going to be 1200 and our percent is given to us right in the question as five. So we have 5% over 100. So this is how you should set the question up. So this time let's do, let's multiply by 1200 on both sides. So let's do it this way. So I'm just trying to show you a couple different ways to solve these equations throughout the video. And there's really no right or wrong way to do it as long as you get the right answer. So we will do 5 times 1200 divided by 100. And so I find that x equals 60. This is not the right answer yet, though. This just tells us that the 5% raise adds $60 to our monthly salary. All we do is we do 1200 plus 60. And so now we figure out that she's making uh, $1,260 a month. So now that we looked at several examples of word problems, a simpler question like this, what percent of 60 is 12, will hopefully be a lot easier for you. So let me give you a chance to try this question now. You can pause the video and try it now. Okay, so we can use the same formula, but this time what we're going to do is just make sure that the bigger number goes in for the whole. I would put 12 into the formula for part because 12 is the smaller number. And the whole is going to be 60 because 60 is the bigger number. And so now I have, this is equal to 60, or sorry, this is equal to percent 
over 100. Again, you could cross multiply. Uh, sometimes though, like I've said throughout the video, what I like to do is often deal with this fraction here first. So 12 divided by 60 is 0.2. Uh, so we have 0.2 equals percent over 100. And now we simply multiply by 100 and that simply gives us 20. So the answer here is 20. More really important things you should note. So as a quick tip, the word of is usually gonna come before the number that you plug in for whole. Like in that last case, we saw that 60 was the number we plugged in for whole and the word of came right before it. And also note that the number that's in front of the percent sign is sometimes gonna be called the rate. 